Well, hi everyone. In this video, I would like to show you one more very clever example of applying the pigeonhole principle to prove something that may at first not appear like it has anything to do with the pigeonhole principle. Let's read this example together. A student has 37 days to study for a test. She wants to study at most 60 hours in total, but she also would like to study at least one hour each day. What we're going to prove in this example is that there is a succession of days during which she has studied for exactly 13 hours. Isn't that remarkable? It doesn't seem like the numbers, the 37, the 60, and the 13 are necessarily all that related to each other. And yet somehow we're going to use the pigeonhole principle now to prove this result. The solution involves starting off with a very clever approach, which is that we're going to keep track of how many days this or how many hours this student has studied up through the first K days. So let's just do this. For every k greater than or equal to 1, I'm going to let a sub k, by definition, I'm going to let a sub k denote the number of hours that this student has studied on the first k days. The number of hours studied on the first days. Okay? So what we know, for example, from the given information is that obviously on the first day, she studies at least one hour, right? A1 is at least one. But then each additional day, she studies at least one more hour. So we can create a chain like so, and by the time we get up to 37 days, she wants to have studied at most 60 hours total. So we've got these 37 distinct integers, but of course they land somewhere between one and 60. Now the trick to this problem is that we would like to somehow bring the 13 into play. There's no mention of the number 13 here. We would like to show that there's a succession of days during which she has studied exactly 13 hours. The trick to bringing the 13 into play here, guys, is to literally take this chain of inequalities and add 13 across the board. So we're literally going to do that right now. I'm going to add 13 to everything that we see. Everything that we see, we add 13 to it, okay? And what you'll notice that we have now, guys, is we have these 37 numbers right here, and then we have these 37 numbers right here. Of course, the second list of 37 numbers is just the same as the first list added by 13. So we just take the first list of 37 numbers and we add 13 to all of those. <clears throat> but in total now, that is 74 numbers. However, where do those numbers live? They're all at least one. And they're all at most 73. They are integer values. So we have 74 objects. Those are the 37 numbers here and the 37 numbers here. There are 74 objects and we can place them in a box that is labeled with a number between one and 73. So what we can say then is by the pigeonhole principle, two of these numbers that I have circled here have to be the same. Two of the numbers in the inequalities must be the same. 
two of them have to be the same. That's by the pigeonhole principle. I have 74 numbers, those are the objects, going into 73 boxes, which are the integers from 1 to 73. Now, I would like to point out that none of the numbers on the top row can be the same. They're all strict inequalities here. So A1 is strictly less than A2, which is strictly less than A3, and so on. None of these are the same. And likewise, on the second line, we have simply added 13 to a bunch of numbers that were not the same to begin with. And so the numbers on the second row are still all distinct numbers on the second row. So if we can co are concluding that two of the numbers are the same, it must be that some number from the first sequence is the same as some number from the second sequence. Because the numbers within the first sequence are all distinct. The numbers within the second sequence are all distinct. So somehow it has to be that there's a number from the first sequence that agrees with some number from the second sequence. Let's write that down. Some number, let's say a sub i from the first sequence is the same as some number, uh, let's say a sub j plus 13 from the second sequence. This is going to be the key point, guys. In other words, a sub i is equal to a sub j plus 13. <laughs> that we know. And if I now just do subtraction here, if I subtract, I take a sub i minus a sub j, I get exactly 13. In other words, the difference between how many hours this student has studied on the first J days compared with how many hours she studied on the first I days, that difference is 13, which means that between the I and J days, right, she studied exactly 13 hours. So this student studied exactly 13 hours on days, so they would be days actually j plus one, j plus two, and so on up to i. In this case, we can assume that the i is larger than j because this is, after all, an increasing sequence, right? So the, the numbers are getting strictly larger as we go. So if we subtract ai minus aj and get 13, that actually means that i has to be bigger than j. So that is exactly the conclusion that we wanted to draw. She studied exactly 13 hours on a succession of days from the j plus first day up to the i j. I hope this example makes sense. It's another illustration that the pigeonhole principle is clever. As simple as the statement it, of the pigeonhole principle is, how to use it to create objects and boxes to then prove some result that doesn't explicitly mention the pigeonhole principle, that's where the real practice and experience needs to take place so that we can get some experience with how to use this principle effectively. I hope that this example is another step in that direction for you. Uh, if you have any questions about it, be sure to reach out to me. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you guys all again soon in the next video. Bye for now.